Bill C-68, the Kretschan government's proposed gun control legislation, is now being studied by the Justice Committee. In question period today, reform justice critic Jack Ramsey demanded to know why the Liberals are trying to rush the bill's passage. Uh, questions remain unanswered re regarding whether or not sections of Bill C-68 may be contrary to the Charter of Rights and Freedom. The constitutionality of Bill C-68 is in is question, and courts in Alberta and B.C. have declared the orders in council under Bill C-17, which have been used again by the Minister of Justice, to be invalid. My question, would it not be prudent for the government to resolve these matters before proceeding to ram Bill C-68 through before the summer recess? Yeah, there's no intention of the federal government to ram the bill through, the par through Parliament. Nor, nor is it in the intention of the, of, the, of the federal government to delay the bill unduly. It's taking a natural course through the House of Commons. It is presently before the Standing Committee, and uh, we have witnesses, and the witnesses are making excellent presentations. It's going as it was meant to go, and, and hopefully we will receive good, uh, further good testimony from the witnesses, which we can review and perhaps make substantive amendments to the bill before it leaves committee. In the morning, a delegation from Saskatchewan, led by Justice Minister Bob Mitchell, will appear before the Commons Justice Committee. And Bob Mitchell joins me now. Mr. Mitchell, is Saskatchewan going to go ahead with the court challenge of uh, this legislation if it passes as is? Well, we're going to take a long look at, uh, at it if it is passed by Parliament. Uh, and uh, we're going to have to take some pretty good legal advice on the point. But uh, if, uh, if the uh, thrust of our legal advice is that we have a reasonable uh, argument to put to the courts that it's unconstitutional, we, would, uh, we wouldn't hesitate to do that. Now, you've got an all-party uh, uh, delegation appearing for the Justice Committee uh, tomorrow. You yourself have had uh, talks with the Justice Minister uh, in various meetings uh, about Saskatchewan's strong opposition to this bill, yet Ottawa, the federal government, hasn't signaled any significant changes are coming. No, they haven't. Uh, it's a bit discouraging. Uh, we're not certain that they even understand what we're talking about. Uh, uh, we hope to be able, though, with the with the three parties, the Conservatives and the Liberals and the uh, and the government of Saskatchewan, to uh, impress on them that there really is a big problem here. Uh, you have a, a large uh, portion of the uh, of the country that just don't believe that this is a law that makes any sense or that it's needed or that there's any purpose to it. So that's a very, very serious situation, I think, and we're going to try and impress that on the Standing Committee tomorrow. Is your opposition only focused in on the, uh, on the gun registry? Yes, it's, the, it's the, uh, in effect the licensing of gun owners and the registration of guns that are part of the package that uh, I think, and every, you know, all the, all the, uh, the uh, people concerned in Saskatchewan seem to feel it just goes too far, just uh, goes way beyond what's necessary for any of the uh, matters that uh, Mr. Rock mentions when he tries to justify this bill. But you've heard uh, Alan Rock cite polls time and time again in Alberta, in your yeah. province, saying yeah. that the public wants this bill, it wants a gun registry. He also cites the strong support by the chiefs of police across the country. Yes, but at the same time, I can point to a vote of the of the of the officers, the, the the police on the street in 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 Saskatchewan, and particularly in my home city of Saskatoon, which uh, said which which opposed this package, which just said in effect it doesn't do any good. And when I say opposed, I mean they all but one of the officers just rejected the idea of registration as being of any use to them at all. So it may be that the uh, the big administrators, you know, the sort of the pencil pushers, think this would be a good idea. But down there on the street in my province, they see no point in a registration system, whatever. I'd like to take the kind of money that we're going to be spending on this and really get at some of these problems, really attack them directly. And I think we could make significant progress in all of these areas without any thought of requiring all the peaceful, law-abiding people to come in and register all their guns and register themselves and all those sorts of things. Mr. Mitchell, when I hear you giving your argument against the gun registry, saying it's going to be too expensive, it's not really going to uh, fight crime in the streets, and then the public hears the federal justice minister, Alan Rock, saying the complete opposite, it's not going to be too expensive, too bureaucratic, and it is going to fight crime in the streets. Yeah. What are they supposed to believe? Is this well, just a philosophical yeah, difference no, here? No, he doesn't even say it'll fight crime in the streets anymore, you know. He's, he's, not, he's not emphasizing that point. He's now on to a bit more esoteric ground. 
And uh, we're just a little confused about what he really hopes to accomplish by all this because we don't, we don't see it. What we're going to be saying to the committee tomorrow is that uh, before we go ahead with this gun law, we should try and figure out in this country whether our gun laws that we've passed, and we've got all kinds of them on the books now, whether they're on the right track and what works and has an impact and what doesn't. Now, that's an evaluation we're talking about. And it seems to me to just be logical that we would evaluate what we've done so far before we undertake a whole new layer of, uh, of uh, reform. If, if Saskatchewan could be satisfied, if the West could be satisfied that there was some purpose to this law, if an evaluation showed that we're headed in the right direction, then I don't think we'd even be here. I think we'd be supporting this package. But frankly, we just uh, don't believe it. It just it doesn't seem to us to make sense. If this legislation passes, what is going to happen in Saskatchewan? Are people going to register their guns? Well, uh, I, I, you know, we, we are we are a law-abiding citizenry, and uh, uh, it, it has always been the case that uh, Western Canadians have obeyed the law. I mean, that, that's that's their nature. But I think it really tears at the social fabric to impose, as part of the criminal law, uh, a major. Uh, legal reform like this that doesn't enjoy some consensus in the community and uh, among the gun owners in Saskatchewan, among the, the farmers and the Aboriginal people and the hunters, uh, there, there, is, there is widespread opposition to this. The polls notwithstanding, it is perfectly clear that the people who will be affected by this law just don't accept it as being valid and I think that's a very, very dangerous situation. It is an effect uh, the majority imposing its will upon the minority in uh, circumstances where the majority can't make out a case for doing this, can't persuade the minority that there's any value in it, and I think that's very serious. Alan Rock has opened the door uh, in the last uh, month or so to possibly uh, people that do not register their uh, guns on the first offense that it will not be a criminal offense. Does that uh, go far enough to satisfy your concerns? Or it, no, it doesn't, but I mean, it's, it's, better than, it's better than nailing them to the wall the first time around. But he's got to address it more fundamentally than that. Somehow Mr. Rock or somebody has to satisfy the people, the folks out in Western Canada, that there is a purpose to this. I mean, there's no point regulating just for the sake of regulating, particularly not with big criminal sanctions. You've got to be careful and sensitive about these things and try and proceed on the basis of a consensus. And that involves a lot more persuasion than is the case so far. Right now, the fact is that Western Canadians who are concerned, you know, who, who are going to have to register their weapons, are uh, they're just scoffing at Mr. Rock. They're, in effect, they're almost laughing at him, you know. If they're not, the ones that aren't angry are, are laughing. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's just not a proper basis for proceeding for major changes to the criminal law of Canada. So I just ask you again, if the legislation goes through with this gun registry, and certainly at this point anyway, the federal government doesn't look like it's backing down, what is going to be the step in Saskatchewan? Is the government going to tell people, don't bother registering your oh, guns, or you're no. going to go right into the oh, courts? Where oh, do we go no. from here? Oh, no. I mean, uh, we're, we're Saskatchewan's part of Canada, so is Alberta and Manitoba, and uh, if, this, if it is the will of Parliament that this be part of the criminal law, then constitutionally we're obliged to... Uh, to, to enforce it, you know, to administer it. But I hope it doesn't come to that. I mean, if there is an evaluation of the existing gun laws and there's some purpose to this, then I think you'll see public opinion in Western Canada change. If there is no value to it, then we just simply shouldn't go ahead with it. If we've got $85 million or whatever Rock uh, estimates this program will cost over the next five years, we'd like to spend that money really getting at some of these problems. And we think there could be considerable advance by tackling them directly rather than through some registration scheme. Mr. Mitchell, I'll have to stop you there. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Deborah. And that is this edition of Capital Report. I'm Deborah Brown filling in for Don Newman. I'll see you again tomorrow from the foyer of the House of Commons. Here now, some memories of VE Day.